food situation in Africa and the third world. Luanda and Anderson have gone to the market and came back home and prepared a great lunch of ugali, managu and kuku. They are now sitting in the shade to enjoy Africa. Hmm. What do you think? Hmm? Pretty good, huh? This is great. You are quite the chef, young man. I need to know your secret to the ugali. The secret is mazua. That is the key. Dr. Anderson, can we now discuss something kind of sensitive? Of course. I am your Rafiki now. What's up? Um, we discussed earlier the slave trade very briefly. I feel that it still has a lingering effect on Africa as a whole. Luanda, this is a painful fact, and you know firsthand some of the dilemmas happening here. Now, many parts in Africa, Asia, and Central and Southern America are referred to as the Third World, or developing, or less developed, depending on their situation. Colonization affected a lot of the country's current economic status, even though they are independent now. This has led to a large problem of food shortage. Yes, I have experienced and seen this firsthand. Now, would it be alright if you can tell me some of the factors that have contributed to this crisis in the third world? I am actually teaching a class next semester on this. Of course, Dr. Anderson. Now shut up and listen, you homo sapien, because I am the teacher now. Yes, yes. Now, to begin, there is the nature itself of Africa and third worlds. You see, since we live in the tropics, we experience dry conditions that result in droughts. The hot weather allows a breeding ground for pests and diseases, which run rampant due to lack of medical help. Now, when we do get rain, it can happen that we experience many floods that damage our livelihoods. Wow. Please, continue. I'm writing this all down. Hmm. Now, when disasters happen, third world countries are dependent on donations from international countries. We are always in the pocket of someone else. This is due to a high chance of political instability from war or corruption that hinders our implementation of policies. Like what policies? Now, uh, a direct result of this is that infrastructure is poor in terms of transport, communication, processing, and storage, which all combines to discourage farmers to learn better practices and do poor actions such as overgrazing. Overgrazing, like using the land too much that it harms it. Hmm, this is a lot of information. Please, keep going. Shh, almost done. Now, these previous factors make farming not as viable of a career as it should be. As a result, the youth, most of whom do not fancy farming because it's kind of dirty, migrate to towns to look for white-collar jobs and leaving behind older people to bear the burden which worsens the situation even further. Urban centers grow from migration and a very rapid population growth which tips the scales heavily in food shortages. Alright student, here's a question for you. Why do farmers only look to grow cash crops in Africa? Hmm, I feel that farmers want to actually acquire capital or money and resources from their work. To grow foods such as maize and beans would result in not being able to buy large machinery like a tractor and only have you working with a djembe. The cash crops such as coffee and cocoa make a lot more money when exported to international countries, but do not feed their nation. This is resulting in a decline of hardy local crops such as yams, cassava, and millet and relying on crops such as maize or rice. Hmm. Did you know all these factors and just make me explain it for the fun of it? 
Maybe, but I am learning. Now, can I ask you a sensitive question? Uh, the teacher will allow it. Please proceed. Sante. What are some of the effects you have seen? Good question. You see, there are a number of negative effects of not having enough food. The most obvious being, more deaths will occur due to low nutrition, which leads to a decrease in population growth. Decrease in population growth. Hmm. But the total population growth is still greater than food production still. That is correct. And those who are living will have more chances for diseases. People will sadly become desperate and do acts such as crime, prostitution, and other evil vices, which leads to a large economic decline since people are just trying to feed themselves any ways they can, unable to look past the current day. What about effects in the government influences? Uh, food can be used as a political tool and a leverage to gain votes by politicians. This leads to increase in political instability and maybe even violence. And as more violence occurs, people will begin to lose faith in their governments. Exactly. And this can greatly erode a nation's pride. Now, if a government looks to outside sources for food aid, this creates debt, as discussed earlier, with constantly relying on foreign aid. It also brings a problem of dumping. Like a, a bathroom problem? Please grow up, Kwadarasalangu, Mr. Anderson. No, this is when international food products can come in and outsell the local market, selling at a much lower price than in the home country. This may feed people all right, but the foods not locally made result in less jobs and self-sustainability. It can also eventually close local business as they can't compete. And this can eventually lead to many people fleeing a country and becoming refugees, making an international scandal. Hmm. Again, I need to make sure I look at these effects and learn deeply. Yes, study up. There will be an exam soon. I didn't sign up for this. All right, one last question. If you were president, what are some steps you would take to help the situations? Not if. You mean when. You see, when I'm president, I would enact policies that encourage food production and bolster the agricultural industry. Oh, Samahani Buona Rice. All right. You haven't gotten my vote yet, though. That's not all. I would also need to promote services in the agriculture sector. This can range from giving advice to farmers to actually funding storage and transport development. I would also need to even look out for the little guy, you know, the farmer, and ensure they can be self-sufficient, armed with knowledge and land. All right, getting convinced. Easy. We also need to research and develop the best practices for agriculture to cut costs and maximize yields. This would also lead into development of roads, marketing, and the banking sectors for the agricultural field. Now, I'm an environmentalist. What about Mother Earth and all this? Oh, nature lover. Not a problem. We would be reclaiming swamping lands through drainage and irrigation, which is creating ways to get rid of the water and making water available in dry areas. For all the land that's turned into productive use, we need to ensure we protect the earth as well. This leads to reforestation, afforestation, and environmental conservation. All of this you can read about in my proposed bill. A natural politician. I am Team Luanda. Hmm. Oh, look at the time. I have to get moving. The dig site skull we found needs to be ready for transport to Nairobi tomorrow. Uh, and how do you intend to transport it? Uh, you want to come along and discuss? Well, uh, sure.
All right, Nairobi.